The Great Auckland Property Bubble by Andrew Diatkin, 4th of November 2015, and my blog is Building Utopia. First, we need to clarify what a bubble is, and why they can only collapse, eventually. Take a look at this graph. The blue line represents the yield over time. Other things being equal, it might be 5% per annum. The sale price of the house, as indicated by the red line, will be closely matched to the yield, as the value of the house is governed by the yield it can deliver. Let's presume it's about $300,000. Now let's do what Auckland Council has done and artificially increase the cost of building new houses. What will then happen? Less new houses will be built, so with population growth, we soon develop an undersupply of homes. The result is rents are bidded up, to the great advantage of people who owned properties just before the regulatory regime that increased new build costs was introduced. So the rents end up delivering a yield of not say 5%, but say 8%. This in turn increases the capital value, resale value, of the investment property as the investment property delivers a greater yield. You might be able to sell your home for say $500,000. However, and this is where it gets interesting, as this happens the investors respond to more than just the increase in rental yield. They respond to the very fact that the capital value of the investment properties is increasing. And as soon as this happens, you in turn trigger what we call a bubble. People start buying properties for say $600,000 and just because they think they can sell them for $650,000 the next year. And indeed, as long as there are enough people with enough money wanting to play this speculator's game, they can indeed sell their properties for $650,000 the next year, and $700,000 the next, and on and on. But the sale price increase has nothing to do with the yield, and everything to do with projected capital gains. And that by definition is a bubble. And bubbles, as I will explain, never fail to burst. It's very simple. Just understand that prices can't radically increase forever and then put yourself in the seller's position. If you are holding onto a property that has a bubbled up resale price, then you will know it by looking at your rental yield. If your net rental yield is about, say, 2% of your asset price, then you can know that your property is grossly overvalued and due for a correction. You will also know that the only reason why you are holding onto that property with the lame yield is because you think its resale value will be much greater the following year. Now again, remember that prices can't just go on increasing year on year and only because they are increasing. Sooner or later the market won't be able to pay and prices will flatline. At this point, if you haven't sold your property, then my word, you had better. Because the rationale for owning your investment property has just disappeared. Once there are no more capital gains to be had, and that is how the market sees it, the value of your asset can only then answer to its true yield base value. And in turn, it makes no sense to own your own investment property, and in turn you will sell it up as fast as you can as you will be much better off putting your money in other high yield assets. And so does everyone. Hence, the bubble bursts as the resale value collapses as everyone wants out. Economists call this a correction, that is prices correct to their true yield based values. The gamble factor in a bubble is in the fact that no one can know when exactly they will burst. Some leading economists have guesstimated that the Auckland market has maybe another 18 months of bubble growth to go, before a crash. But realistically, they just can't know. Regardless, the higher the prices climb in a bubble market, the riskier the gain becomes. Because burst it will, and must, 
because again prices can't keep going up forever. And all you need is for prices to level off and that alone creates the rationale for a selling frenzy and bubbled up stock. Please don't forget that. Myself, if I owned an Auckland property today, I would get it on the market for sale yesterday. And I would declare myself to a mental asylum should I even consider buying an investment property in Auckland today. But then I'm not a rich man, so I can't afford to be a gambler. The politics. The last thing the existing government wants is to have the property bubble come crashing down before the 2017 election. That would most likely destroy the National Party's hopes for a fourth term in power. And that explains a lot. It explains why the current government is, basically, only pretending to solve the housing affordability problem. Because to truly solve the affordability problem is to pop the bubble. Because to offer cheap new builds, which is how you really solve the affordability problem, is to directly undermine the existing overinflated housing stock. As no one pays double what they can ultimately build for half, in any circumstance. Uh, see my video that I linked to at the end to understand this more clearly. The property bubble will burst on its own regardless. But again, the national government does not want that happening before the 2017 election. Hence, we have housing accords, which is the government's cosmetic attempt at solving the affordability problem. The government is basically forcing Auckland Council to increase housing supply, which sort of looks good, but critically, they will not increase affordable housing supply. And likewise, they will sustain the bubble. In fact, the government has been trying to redefine what affordable housing even is, in, what looks to me, to be a rather pathetic attempt at placating the public. That is, the younger public, who are desperate to buy their own home. However, when all is said and done, and the Auckland bubble finally bursts, and yes, it's going to happen, we will have an opportunity. We can either let the bubble charge up again, because we don't reform the core dynamics that allowed it to build in the first place, or we can demand reform and make sure this disaster never happens again. We must demand reform. Otherwise, we will financially ruin a following generation like we have already largely done with the millennials. We have ruined the millennial generation's ability to make a family without undue financial stress, primarily due to our ridiculously inflated housing market. Please refer to my video, Housing Affordability For Real. We need to put an end to this madness, once and for all. Thank you.